Good to see you. Last three games, Faku has 30 assists to six turnovers. Have you noticed a different element or a different energy uh, with him orchestrating the offense? Uh, no, I can't say I've noticed something just in regards to Faku. Uh, I think, you know, since Jamal went down, we're seven and one. Obviously, Faku's played very well. Uh, PJ, Michael, Aaron, Nicole in the starting group. Uh, and then the bench guys, you know, Austin, Shaq, uh, Jamichael, Paul, JaVale, I think has been a concerted collective effort. Uh, I think we're tied for the uh, best record in the NBA in the last eight games, and we have a top 10 defense and a top 10 offense. So Yafak is definitely a part of that. Um, but, you know, our, our offense has been, you know, top three all season long. So we'll go to Ryan Blackburn. Coach, I don't know if we asked you about Michael Porter last night. Uh, how is he doing after rolling that ankle? And, and what do you expect from him kind of on this back to back? Yeah, he's fine. He's ready to play. Next, we'll go to Michael Grange. Mike, Mike Grange here in Toronto. Hope you're well. Um, is there any update that we can get on Jamal in terms of what he's done since the surgery? Is he rehabbing there in Denver and and has he been around the team at all? Just any kind of detail that we haven't been privy yeah, to. Yeah, you know, he's uh, he's still reba rehabbing out in, uh, out in L.A. Okay. So uh, we fly out to L.A. tomorrow. So hopefully we'll have a chance to see Jamal. Uh, I know that we've all been staying in touch with him, um, but nothing like seeing him, giving him a hug, and letting him, uh, him know how much that we miss him. But uh, he has not been around his team since he had the surgery. He stayed in L.A. to this point. At some point, he'll be clear, clear to leave L.A. Uh, to come back to Denver to continue that rehab process. Um, but I think I speak for everybody in that group, Mike, that we can't uh, – we miss him and we can't wait to see him. Next, we'll go to Leandro Fernandez. Hey, Coach. Uh, following up on Faku, during the last three games, he has tripled his drives to the basket. Uh, was that a point of emphasis or is just him being more comfortable with the team and with the first unit? Yeah, I think it's just Faku, you know, looking to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, he has been shooting the ball extremely well from the three-point line. Um, so as teams are closing out to him, you know, Faku has tremendous quickness. And when he gets into that paint, he makes really good decisions, uh, you know, to kick out to shooters or to find a big rolling, whoever it may be. So, uh, yeah, Faku is kind of taking it upon himself as that starting point guard uh, to find ways to be a little bit more aggressive in every facet of the game. We'll go to Leandro Torres. Hi, Coach. It's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Coach, yesterday you said when we, run, when we rebound, we play better. What is so important, the rebounds, for this team? Well, you limit the second chance opportunities. You know, um, when we get hurt on the glass, it usually means that we're giving teams second and third opportunities to score the ball. And that means also that we're not giving ourselves a, a chance to get out and run and attack before the defense gets set. Um, you know, I think we had 23 fast break points against New Orleans. So when we do get a rebound, uh, we can get out, we can look to push uh, and try to score some easy baskets, which I think you need to do in this league, especially when you head into the postseason. So uh, you always hear us talk about finishing the defense with a gang rebound. That's not just on our bigs. We need all five guys on the floor doing that. Tonight, we're playing against a team that shoots close to 43s a night. So long shots for equal long rebounds. So our guards have to get in the mix as well. Uh, and when we all five rebound and get out and run, then hopefully we can look to attack uh, and, and have a very efficient offensive night. Next, we'll go to Michael Kelly. Sorry about that. Uh, Coach, uh, with the time left you have in the season, the regular season, do you, how much do you balance trying to get this group you know, kind of having a rhythm and a chemistry with fighting for, um, you know, playoff positioning or is it just go hand in hand? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's one game at a time for us. I know that's cliche, but 10 games to go, uh, trying to finish up this homestand. Uh, last time we played Toronto, they absolutely kicked their ass. 
so I think that's fresh in our minds. We understand that after tonight, you play the Clippers, you play the Lakers, you play Brooklyn, you play New York, you play the Jazz. So we, we have some very, very tough games coming up. Uh, so for us, it's all about you're still trying to incorporate new players that you received at trade deadline and Aaron Gordon, JaVale McGee. You're still trying to incorporate a 10-day player in Austin Rivers, as well as a guy, Shaq Harrison, who's a two-way player. Um, the fact that we are, you know, 14 and three in the last 17 games, which is the best record in the NBA, uh, is really remarkable when you consider all the new faces and all the key players that have been lost to injury. So I give our guys a ton of credit in that regard. Um, but, you know, trying to find a way to play at a high level, find a rhythm and, and get guys, especially some of our newer players, a little bit more comfortable in what we're trying to do on both ends of the floor. All right, we have time for one more. We'll end with Mike Singer. Hey, Michael, I have kind of an existential question. Uh, it feels like we are in the middle of a three and four almost every single week. Um, how do you keep the joy that you say your, your team needs to play with? How do you keep it light with these guys when it is such a grind? Yeah, it's definitely a, a challenge. It's a challenge for every team. I think we're all going through it. And you're right, it is a constant three and four. Um, I believe San Antonio and Memphis, at not one point in the second half of their schedule, will they have more than a day in between games? Um, you know, we, we, we have maybe two of those. So I think the, the biggest thing, Mike, is uh, being really smart about how we prepare, getting guys off their feet. Uh, we don't practice anymore. Uh, we rarely have shoot arounds. A lot more of it is a, a mental approach. And our guys have done well with that. Um, you know, I talked to Nicola after the game last night. Some of the, the, the plays that he made are so uncharacteristic of Nicole Jokic, and that speaks to the fatigue that he is feeling. Um, so, yeah, stay positive. Like, we, we watched just now a little bit ago, we watched the last three minutes of the game last night, and, and I told him, I said, listen, uh, we've won five straight games now in games decided by two points or less. Since 2018-19, we've won 20 games decided by two points or less, the most in the NBA. So that's not who we've been. But I thought we had to watch that because all the mistakes that were made and, and we compounded a lot of mistakes. So if we're in those situations tonight, you got to make sure that you don't repeat that. But it's just trying to stay positive uh, and, and staying in tune to our players' spirits, their bodies, and how much rest they need. And uh, I think it's been a pretty healthy balance so far. And that's why we're playing at the level that we're playing at. That'll do it. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you.